Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have three main systems going on right now. First one is Hurricane Katia over here southwest of Bermuda. As mentioned yesterday, she reached her peak when she started another eyewall replacement cycle, and she is now weakening as she slowly heads off towards the northwest and eventually to the north. And she's going to curve out sharply like this, which is just about the best path we could hope for because it passes directly between Bermuda and Cape Hatteras and then stays well to the south of the Canadian Maritime really affecting nobody. So this is an absolutely wonderful storm to track and is serving a great meteorological purpose for learning while not really affecting anybody significantly. So this is an, a wonderful storm to have for our season batch. We have another area now that we're watching Invest 96L in the southern Gulf of Mexico and the NHC has given this a high chance and you know Okay, it's got a nice it's got a nice spin down here. It's at the tail end of a frontal boundary, but they mentioned that the environment is conducive for development. And if we turn on the water vapor here, just look at the mess of dry air that exists northwest of the system, bone dry air. You can see it's going off the color scale here with the black colors. This is on the back side of Lee's old upper trough, X Lee. And there's just a whole ton of dry air in here, very, very dry air, and it's cold to boot. And, you know, I have never seen in the middle of the summer, I guess it's not technically summer anymore since it's September, but do you see these clouds here northwest of the system? These are actually low streets of cumulus clouds due to cold 70 degree air moving out over 88 degree water, forming convective instability in very shallow cumulus cloud streets over the Gulf. This is the kind of thing that you see in the winter. So this is an illustration of how cold, dry, and stable this air is coming in, pressing down on the system from the north. And this is one reason that I think this is not going to be a huge deal. You know, the European winds this up right away and brings it to a 956 millibar hurricane moving up into Louisiana. I don't know why that model has been so wrong on deepening this year, but I don't believe a word of it. I think this will stay fairly weak if it does develop. I could see it developing into a drop storm eventually and eventually try to drift north here but it's not going to get too awful strong especially since we have if we turn back that water vapor we do have this upper trough here and there is shearing going on with the southwest flow over the Gulf of Mexico so this isn't going to be that conducive of an environment for this to strengthen a whole lot but we will have to watch it as it will be around for a little while these are the models for it you can see yesterday a lot of them were bringing it down to the southwest I think they're starting to come around to the idea that this will try to find the weakness with the trough to the north and try to move in the general direction of Louisiana. You can see some of them bring it off into a left hook here near the end, and this is some of the models detecting the trough, leaving it behind just enough to allow the Texas Ridge to nose over and bend it west into Mexico. This is certainly on the table. This is a possibility, and we will have to watch for that. I think it will try to move north, and whether it hooks left, we will have to see. If you're hoping for a hook left right into Texas, that's more unlikely. But hey, we will be hoping for something of that nature. Even if it comes into northern Mexico, maybe the right quadrant, the, the right-hand semicircle will bring some rain to south Texas. Who knows? We will see. But there's a lot of dry air up here right now, as we showed you. This will drift north. And again, I don't think this will be a very strong system at all. This is now Maria, Tropical Storm Maria. Oh, boy, we have to solve a problem like Maria now. This is going to be a lot of fun, isn't it? You can see right now that she's moving off towards the west-northwest and is going to be impacting the northern Antilles Islands within a few days, three days or so. And you can see it's it's it looks decent. Sorry about that. But there are you can see these yellow rings propagating out to the southwest of the system here. There's one out here, one out here at the end of the loop. And these are outflow boundaries due to collapsing thunderstorms in the southwestern quadrant of the system, indicating that there is some dry air around, more so than it may look like. And the low level centers right about here. It looks decent, but not like a rapidly strengthening system. And it's interesting, even the HWRF, one of the most aggressive intensity models that we have, does not strengthen Maria very much on her way west-northwest. And there are a couple of reasons for why this could be. One of the reasons why conditions may not be too favorable for strengthening in here is that there is some dry air around due to the downward MJO. The initial conditions show brown colors indicating sinking air in the large scale over the central Atlantic. And this is indicating that air in this general region is more stable and trying to sink. And thus, it's drying out and causing diversions at the surface. And that's one of the reasons that Kaya here has a strong inflow of air out of the southeast which is indicating sinking air 
just ahead of Maria, which is not a great environment for her strengthening. But if we look at the water vapor here, wind shear is not really an issue. I've heard this thrown around, but the wind shear here, she's got a nice cirrus field from the southwest to the north of the system. There's not that much shear. The problem is the dry air to her north and to her west, and even some to her south that looks deceptively moist on water vapor. It is fairly dry to her south. That will be the, the main issue with large-scale sinking due to the MJO. But you can see that the MJO does turn around within five days or so, and by 10 days out, it's fairly green with lots of upward motion over the tropical Atlantic by the time we get out to mid-September, and by that time she might have more favorable conditions around her to strengthen in the area where Kaadia is, perhaps a little bit southwest of her. If she follows the exact path of Kaadia up in here, she'll hit the warm the cold water wake and not be able to strengthen much, but if she stays southwest of Kaadia's path, she'll be able to strengthen some north of the Caribbean. Now she should move towards the northern Antilles Islands, not right into the heart of the Caribbean. The, the, the European still tries to bring it in here. Some of the ensemble members bring it into the heart of the Caribbean. There is a good reason why she should move into the Northern Islands, and it's because of where the Bermuda High is. If we look at where Cadi is moving, see how she's moving northwest right now? If we draw a line through her eye with her movement right now, then the high is going to be roughly perpendicular and to the right of her direction of motion. And when we find the clouds, we end up seeing that the high, the Bermuda High is way up here. So if the Bermuda High is way up here, guess what? This little storm is going to gain some latitude trying to get as close to the high as possible before encountering resistance. So she's going to end up near the northern Caribbean islands Puerto Rico area in about three days instead of moving into the heart of the Caribbean. So I don't believe the European ensembles and I think she will be in here like the most of the models say along with the NHC forecast. And then we're going to have to talk about the long term track. And I'm going to say right now I actually think Maria has a good chance of missing the United States altogether. Um, except, of course, it could hit the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico. But in terms of the continental United States, I think she actually may miss. And there's a good reason why. We've been talking about Lee's old upper trough, and you can see it here in the water vapor imagery. It's still up here. It's trying to lift out, but it's going to get stuck over the center of the country. And in five days, it's still sitting here over the central gulf. And this is what could bring 96L northward. But it's going to have to be rescued. The only way it's going to leave here is if it gets rescued by a long wave trough to the north. And you can see that one of them is charging up in five days on the GFS ensembles here in southern Canada, going to come down phase with Lee's trough and then bring it out to sea here and finally take it away. So by day seven, we have a big trough over the eastern United States, and Maria would be somewhere in here and see where the jet stream flow is out of the southwest. If she's moving up in here, she's going to recurve out just like that, sort of like Kadia, perhaps a little bit farther southwest than her, but a strong curve out to the east-northeast. And this is not just the GFS ensembles that show this. The Canadian in day seven also has a big trough over the eastern United States. And I fully agree with the solution because with Lee's trough stuck here, something is going to have to come out of Canada to rescue him. So, well, not him, but his trough that he leaves behind. Something has to rescue this, and so we are going to see a setup like this occur at some point during the next week to 10 days. We will see a big trough for the eastern United States. Now, the only way, Ka uh, not Kadia, Maria is going to affect the United States is if she does pass into the heart of the Caribbean, which I just explained why she won't, and then either that or she waits for this trough to lift out and the ridge builds into her north and she moves into the United States but she would have to wait for seven to eight days before passing 70 west she's probably gonna make it there a long while before then so chances are she's actually going to miss the United States and recurve out between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda similar to Hurricane Cadia and she will be a weaker storm but she should still recurve here and that is what I'm talking about with her track right now. But if we go out to day 11, the ridging returns with a flatter jet stream across southern Canada on the GFS, and then we have the mean weakness over the Gulf of Mexico with the ridge building in over the Central Atlantic. And so then guess what? We get to start watching down here in the northwestern Caribbean in the Bahamas and southern Gulf of Mexico area for more trouble like I've been talking about. And we can see what's going on here. These are the sea surface temperature anomalies. Notice that we had, remember, we had Irene go up here, see the cold water left by her, starting to warm up now, but it's still cold. And then we had Kadia, who's curving out. Look at all the cold water being generated by her large circulation. And then we have Maria, which is probably going to do a similar type of pass. She may not be that strong, but she will contribute to the cooling of the waters in this area. And cooler waters mean sinking motion, negative signs in the air motion vertically here, sinking air which means that it contributes to positive motion 
upward motion of the air over the Caribbean and the southern Bahamas and the southern Gulf of Mexico, which means that we're going to have to watch this area during the third week of September. I think we will see a storm in this area between September 15th and September 25th. That may be a bigger one to watch. The next one to really watch for the United States, I think, may occur after mid-month. So we will have to see how that pattern goes as well. Right now, our immediate concern, most immediate concern, is 96L for the United States and for the islands we're watching. Maria probably won't be a hurricane in here. There's still a chance of it, but it looks like downward motion in here may keep her in check before reaching the islands. So I would be prepared for a storm. I wouldn't worry a whole lot about it, but keep a close eye on the system because it is three days away and make sure your plans are still in place. I know you guys were generally ready for Irene, so hopefully that won't be too big of an issue. But keep an eye on her in here, and hopefully she doesn't turn out to be too big of a problem. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.